completing the Stuart triple expansion engine part 33. Commencing the procedure for timing the slide valve, which controls the admission and exhaust on the intermediate cylinder. This was never a job I was looking forward to. It's very fiddly, very tricky and very easy to get wrong. And at this moment in time, I haven't yet fitted the reversing shaft and the drop arms and all the valve gear. And what I will have to do is hold the expansion link with my fingers to find out whether the valve is travelling an equal distance over both the ports in forward and reverse. A while back I made this very crude and simple jig using some pieces of scrap brass angle. When the two pieces of brass angle are finally fitted this will simulate the steam chest. It has to be done this way because the casting for the high pressure cylinder contains the steam chest for the intermediate cylinder. The jig that I made is very basic and you can see how it all fits together. Four machine screws, four brass washers and four nuts make it very simple to attach and remove this from the intermediate cylinder's port face. And that's the easy bit done, now I go underneath the engine to fit the eccentric straps. There's not a lot of room in here and it's very difficult to video what I'm doing because as you can see my hand occupies all of the space. And here I'm spinning a nut onto one of the eccentric strap bolts using a screwdriver. At this stage I didn't realise that my modified nut spinner actually fits these nuts so later on you'll see me using it. Here's a bit of a tip. Most people will be familiar with this. I'm going to put a very small nut on the end of this very small bolt using a very well known method. I'm going to stick this 7BA bolt to my finger but I'm not going to use super glue. I find that not a good way of doing it. I'm using steam oil because it's very thick and gloopy and sticky. I could use some grease but that's in a tub at the other side of the workshop but my oil cans are usually on the bench right next to where I'm working. Using this method in no time at all without dropping the nut I managed to engage it on the threads of the bolt. And now both of the eccentric straps are assembled and fitted to the eccentric sheaves. To make this job a little bit easier I didn't really need to do it but I separated one of the eccentric rods from the expansion link and here I'm putting everything back together. Just in case you're wondering about the cable tie and what it's for. Without the cable tie being fitted, the big end of the connecting rod fouls the side of the base. The purpose of the cable tie is just to keep the connecting rod vertical. In this clip I'm fitting something called a die block in the expansion link. And once I slid the die block into its approximate position I centred it using my scriber point. This makes it very easy to fit the bolt as shown here. And once again my surgical forceps come in very useful for holding the nut in the correct position while I rotate the nut spinner. A word of caution here, do not over tighten the bolt. Because if you do over tighten it, two things can happen. One, you can shear off the bolt. And if you don't shear off the bolt but still tighten it too much, it will clamp the expansion link between the valve fork. This small die block needs to be a very easy sliding fit in the gap in the expansion link. This one appears to be slightly stiff, but that's due to lack of oil. In this clip you can see the principle. The two pieces of brass hold the valve rod in a vertical position. And as I rotate the engine, the eccentrics move the valve rod up and down via the expansion link. And when I set the valve, I will have to hold this expansion link in place because the die block needs to be held in a fixed position in the expansion link so I can obtain the correct result when I come to time the valve. Now I've oiled the expansion link as you can see it's quite an easy fit and it's moving quite smoothly. Thanks to the wonders of modern video and slow motion I noticed something that I may have overlooked. At one end of the travel of the expansion link it's actually fouling the valve fork. This problem needs correcting. A simple fix, I just file the top of the valve fork. Then it will clear the expansion link and no binding will occur. This is a very common problem. It's not too bad if you're working on a single cylinder engine but this one has three. As I was rotating the crankshaft, 
and noticed a serious error that I'd made. I initially set the position of this pair of eccentrics which control the slide valve for the intermediate cylinder to the wrong crank web, and in this clip you can see just how easy it is to do that. As the pair of eccentrics clamped onto the crankshaft are right next to one of the crank webs. It's very easily done, I seldom work on triple expansion engines. This clip also shows that I've removed the bottom halves of both of the eccentric straps. These split eccentrics are quite a piece of engineering, I really wouldn't like to make any of these. It's not very high on the list of things I'd like to do in my workshop. Originally this split double eccentric sheave was fitted to the crankshaft using two slot headed bolts. I modified these split eccentrics to use Allen cap head bolts which are much stronger. Once I changed the starting point of these eccentric sheaves relative to the correct crank web below the centre cylinder, I tightened them up. There's a good chance though that they won't be in this position when I've finished. I may have to dismantle this valve gear quite a few times to get the valve in the right place. This is a stage of the video when I realised that my nut spinner that I machined in my lathe fits on the 7BA nuts that hold the eccentric straps in place. This is a really fiddly job and you need a lot of patience to get it right. And what's a little bit worrying is originally this engine didn't have a valve in the intermediate cylinder so I think the builder ran into problems at this point. I can't be certain but it may be the reason that he never finished the engine. Here I'm refitting the die block into the expansion link. This is a slide valve that I made for this engine, but I was experimenting with it to try and make it wider. And at the time I didn't have the correct size milling cutter for the slot. So very shortly I'm going to make another one from this piece of gun metal. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.